So good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar, Best Practices for Blended and Remote Learning Using Its Learning. Today, our guest speakers will present their experiences with the blended and remote learning approaches at Collège de Le Mans International School in Switzerland. Uh, we'll just quickly share the agenda for today. First, we're going to hear about our guest speakers and their presentation that includes a walkthrough the its learning platform and some of their best practices. We will have a Q&A, and just as a reminder, all attendees are muted for this session, but please send us your questions during the presentation. You will find the option in the right hand of the screen with a question mark. Finally, we will present some links to complement this session. So without further ado, I'm happy to welcome Jacob Rush, Head of Educational Technology, Aime Skidmore, English teacher, and Tom Moores, Sports Science teacher at College de Leman. Good morning. Good morning. 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 So I thought I would start by sharing our It's Learning mission. We started using It's Learning at the start of the school year, obviously with no idea we'd be moving to virtual school. So we came up with this mission, which is all about having It's Learning being a centralized place for planning our courses, sharing resources with students and colleagues, tracking our assessment records, you know, our live grade book, and then communicating with students, colleagues, and parents. So that was our vision, but then all of a sudden we needed to move to virtual school. And that faced us with many, well, we perceived these to be challenges on the next slide. And in short, what we wanted to do is think of these challenges ahead of time. And this is what we identified as challenges, um, which was standardizing every lesson. We wanted each student not to be lost in the start of the virtual school experience. So we made It's Learning messaging that starting point. So every, at the start of every lesson, a student would get a message telling them what they were going to be doing that day. And we're gonna show you that messaging feature a little bit later. We wanted to keep students engaged in our virtual school. And we know from the research that student engagement is key to a successful virtual school experience. And a big part of that for us is active learning. In a CDL classroom, you don't see a lot of long lectures. We like to have our students participate in active learning, which means they're doing things, doing assignments, creating projects. And so a challenge for us is creating that online, and It's Learning helped us do that. We also wanted to document our lessons. We wanted to keep a record of what we had taught, and then also let parents and students know what was coming up. So we wanted to have a document and we used its learning plans for that and we will show you in a little bit and then we also wanted to monitor students progress we wanted to see how students were performing in the virtual school so we identified those as challenges so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to share my screen and I'm going to take you through the starting point for it's learning at CDL, and that is through plans. And with C It's Learning, you start on an overview page. And what you can do is, what I tell teachers to do is to start with plans. So I'm gonna open plans now. And here we can see plans. They're di divided by topics. And here we can see three different topics. We say this is like your units. And so we have three units in here. And within a topic, you have a plan. And this is my plan. My plan is about creating plans. And I created it for this to, for you today. But this looks very similar to what I do with my students. I put the date range in here, which does two things. It puts it on the overview page where we just were. And you also write a description, which is what your which will go to the calendar and the overview page as well. And then we have the resources and activities. I keep my resources and activities together and I create what's called a playlist. And this is because we're heavily invested in uh, blended learning at our school, a playlist is something our teachers know. And what that means is you just create a list of activities and you can differentiate that list for students and then they just follow it. So this is my playlist for plans. And it starts with a lesson introduction through Microsoft Teams. So to get the students engaged with what we're doing today, I like to have a quick Microsoft Teams meeting. 
just to explain the lesson, get them excited about the lesson. And then after that meeting is over, um, they begin the playlist. So here we have watch a video on how to create a plan. Um, it's just a link to a video that's embedded in its learning. And then I've linked to a OneDrive resource, I mean a Google Drive resource, um, which is uh, read a guide for creating your first plan. And then in four, they're gonna brainstorm with a partner on a collaborative Microsoft Word document. So if they press on this, they'll have a Microsoft Word document that they can both write on simultaneously. And then in step five, they're going to post to a Padlet. We find that in order to keep students engaged, collaboration is key. Collaboration cannot just be between the teacher and the student. We need to create some student-to-student -student collaboration, just like we have in the classroom. So tools like Collaborative Word and Padlet are really important for that. And then lastly, I want to test to see what they know through a quiz. This quiz is not live yet for the students, so the students can't see the quiz. If it's in italics like this, it means it's visible to me, but not the students. And then I'll quiz them to see how much they've learned about plans. So that is a playlist. This would be one lesson for me. But moving on, a key feature for us in its learning is assignments. And Tom is going to show us how you can do an assignment in its learning. Okay, excellent. Good morning. I'm just going to share my screen now, so hopefully you can see my screen. And um, essentially, the first thing I want to do is just distinguish between assignments and tasks. So assignments are what I will set up if I want something handed in. So if I want the students to submit something to me, either a file or a document or something like that, then I'm going to set it up as an assignment. If it's just something that I want them to do, but I don't necessarily need any evidence that they've done it, then I need to set up as a task. So being a sports scientist, that task might be for them to update their activity log that they keep every week of the physical activity that they're doing. So moving on in assignments is really, really useful for me, particularly in the, um, you know, in the situation we find ourselves with the distance learning at the moment, principally because it allows us to, to, to test that understanding, which is much more difficult in an environment that isn't face to face. Normally, when, you know, as teachers, when we look around a classroom, we can get a pretty good idea from body language, eye contact, and things like that, as to what level of understanding the students have acquired. Obviously, in a virtual environment, that's much more difficult. So if, we want, if I want my students to, to do something, to perform a task, and they, they submit it, and then obviously I can assess their level of understanding from their submission. It also increases engagement as well because I find that if I ask them to do something and then they have to submit a response or submit uh, a file that I'm then going to review, it means that they're going to spend more time with that task. So, the, um, so we, can, we can increase engagement in, in that respect. One thing that I like about assignments is uh, I'm going to take you through a couple just to, just to show you in the most basic sense we can set an assignment where all I'm asking for is I can set a question. So for example, the task here is to look at an attached resource, and I can attach a web link there. And then I want them to evaluate the advantages and disadvantages of a particular type of training. If we look at what Bart has submitted, we can see that he has chosen to submit a Word document. And one of the advantages of this, I found, is that actually I can make comments directly into the online version of Word. So I can, I can write comments for, about referring to specific parts of his document. I can then, on the right here, give him general feedback. So I can use um, school's assessment scale. In this case, I've graded it to be ME or meeting expectations. And I can give some feedback here. I can also upload a verbal recording of feedback. And I can add any additional files that I want to as well. Another great thing about assignments is that, is that it doesn't just stop at the students submitting the work and me giving feedback. There's actually a box down here which allows us to further discuss the work and have an ongoing conversation which can allow that work to develop and then be resubmitted for a, a final copy. So at its most simple, that's what, um, that's what it looks like. If we just quickly look at Lisa Simpson's submission, so she chose to enter it directly into its learning and that's fine as well, and I can still give feedback and the grade there. 
One of the other great things about assignments is the fact that if I want to, I can, I can, I can get the groups to peer assess each other. So in this assignment here that I'm looking at, they had to design a training program for, for an athlete of their choice. And we can see that they've submitted the, the assignment and then Bart and Lisa have had to peer assess each other's work. And this is really key for me because it allows that element of interaction that we were talking about that is, that is quite often missing in, in virtu the virtual school environment. And I can oversee it and I can see, for example, that, that Lisa has assessed Bart's work. And one of the things I find quite useful is using a grading rubric because when you're asking students to peer assess one another's work, it really helps them to structure their response. So I've set a number of different criteria and all the student has to do is select the appropriate criteria for the, for the work. At the bottom, they can also leave some written feedback as well. Overall, as the teacher, I can then assess the work, and I can either do that via the rubric or I can do it on the side here by selecting a level. So I, I would say that this work is meeting my expectations. And again, I can leave feedback to Bart just here as well and click Save Assessment. Once I've done all that, I can see all of the assessments. If I go to, if I go to my status and follow-up page, an assessment record, I can see a list of all of the assignments that I've chosen to be, to, to be sent to the assessment record. So this is quite good. Um, this is a really useful tool for being able to sort of see trends and patterns in, in a student's performance. So any, any problems can be picked up on quite early. So that's that's a couple of things. That's a couple of ways that I use uh, I use assignments. Um, I think they're a great way of checking um, levels of understanding, and overall, I find them really useful. There's a really comprehensive guide if you need any of the technical information about how to set up assignments and how to do use peer assessment or collaborative work for the assignments, and that's available in, on its learning as well. So I'll hand back to you, uh, Jacob. Thanks for that, Tom. Yeah, so next, Emma is going to take us through Pages. Now, Pages is a way to get all of your assignments and resources in just one place. So, Emma, if we could share your screen and take a look at Pages. Okay, good morning. I've been using It's Learning in my face-to-face -face classroom since September, but when that global health crisis hit, Within about a week, I realized I was really going to need to adjust the way I was using its learning for the virtual school experience. And I think one of the challenges that we were all facing at that point was that students were really uncertain about what was going on. They didn't really feel like they were in control of very much. And there were so many outside factors like time zones and location, their home environment, and perhaps level of support that we, we really needed to listen to that feedback they were giving us. And from that, I identified four areas that I really wanted to be intentional about as I went about planning my lessons differently. Uh, number one, that was how students were navigating the course. Number two, how I was maintaining relationships with those students and how they were keeping those connections with each other. And number three, how I was allowing for student voice and choice uh, in, in the lessons and for uh, addressing the well-being and mental health piece uh, for these students. And so I found that pages worked particularly well for me, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'll give you an overview of that now. So here you have my page for the week, and I've put in a few elements here on the right hand side are the lessons on the left hand side is my weekly message i have a space for well-being as well as a space for class discussions and also polls and surveys and so what i like about pages is that it's one place for students to find all the assignments tasks uh, with clear instructions and resources and i can also give some audio and visual uh, video cues on the right hand side here you can see that I have my learning objectives and that I have embedded uh, in a really clean and neat way using the embedded features within its learning to, to provide my lessons. 
And this was especially important for students with learning differences because they were expressing to me that they were having trouble navigating through the systems. And so having it all here really helped for them. And uh, I have here my lessons for the week. So it, I'm telling them when I want them to do these. And again, that embedded feature is, is very neat and, and clean. Um, another way I also use it is I give students choice. Uh, so I want them to complete one of these and they get to choose what they want to do, uh, leaving them with that, that feeling of agency uh, and participation. And at the end of every week, I build in a survey because I really want to hear what they think about the work, the content. It's a way for me to check their understanding and to make adjustments if I needed to. Once I set this page up, in this way, I didn't change it, and I still haven't changed it uh, in, as we approach uh, week 10 next week. Uh, and that's important because students need to be able to have some sort of stability in what they're seeing. Uh, this is also nice to have it all in one place for students who have connectivity problems. They're able to screenshot that when they come in, and then they can work asynchronously through those materials. On the left-hand side, this is my weekly message. I include that every week video because I think it's important that students feel my presence in the course. And regardless of whether I have a synchronous call with them or not, uh, they know I'm here. They know that I can give them an overview of the week. And it just establishes a landing spot for them and a routine for them to follow every week. One of the areas that I use a lot for keeping them in the relationships that I already have with my students is through the chat function right here. And I can send out messages to the whole group or I can send out messages to individual students. And uh, I also use the 360 reports. This is a very proactive way to see the level of engagement that students have in your course and then reach out to them in a supportive way as opposed to using it in, in a punitive way. I found that that has really increased engagement in my courses. I can talk to students specifically about what they're doing and how they're, they're approaching the work. Um, on the bottom here, this is where I put my class discussion. I built that into the course, into the page, because in addition to other embedded tools like Padlet, I felt like this enabled students to ask questions of each other, ask questions of me, and take control of their learning space um, by interacting with each other. And uh, they, they use that to either talk about content or to talk about uh, how the course is set up. Sometimes, not always, if I want to know something uh, more immediate, I put a, a poll. And this is great for having students tell me what they want to be changed or what they enjoy. And lastly here on the left-hand side is the well-being section. And I include that because there I can put tips and activities for how I think they can make this difficult time a little bit easier. And it shows them that I care about them and I care about their mental health and I think it's important. I don't have it included in this one, but it's also a way to build community because I was putting links to student theatrical and musical performances so that they can still feel part of their school community. And that's why uh, Pages works really well for me. And with the features built in, I can just copy these pages over and over again, rename them, and fill in my template with different materials depending on the week. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jacob and Tom, for this wonderful presentation. Just going to switch back to my screen and we can move on with the Q&A. Uh, just a reminder, if you have any questions, just send them over in the questions uh, option. So we're going to go with the first one. It says, what is the its learning attainment compared to traditional schooling at Colegio de Mar? I think we it, attainment is obviously different in a virtual school and we need to rethink what attainment is. For us, teachers are moving forward with, with content and teaching their, their curriculum through the virtual school experience. Teachers are assigning work and getting work back and giving feedback. So that's the most important thing for us in terms of student growth. But Emma and Tom, maybe you want to talk a little bit about your specific subjects and attainment and how you see 
your students improving in the virtual school experience? Is it the same as in the traditional classroom? Is it different? What do you think? Well, for my classroom, there are things that are so different about virtual school experience than the 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 face-to-face -face classroom. One of the the improvements, I think, is that students are showing more independence. They're taking control of how they approach work and how they get things done. We really put them in the driving seat, in the driver's seat for their course. It's up to them to get in there and see what's going on and interact with the course materials. I'm seeing more creativity in the way that they are having to figure out some of the tech issues themselves and having to figure out what the best way is that they're working and how they can show their knowledge. And it's learning has enabled us to, to, to keep up with what students, how students want to show us their learning. Yeah, I would, um, I would, I would absolutely agree with that. Certainly um, the, the online platform has certainly got advantages for, for certain students, you know, I know a lot of my students actually really appreciate the, you know, the, the organization, the ability as well to be able to go back and revisit things very easily from previous lessons and recap learning that perhaps they needed a, a second visit to, to truly understand. And that's been really useful for me. I think there's also a lot of built-in features that enable students to stick with an assignment for an extended period of time and continue to work on it through self-review, peer review, revision, and that has helped us to slow down, uh, stay a little bit more stable uh, for, for students in this really ever-changing time that we're in. All right, thank you. I have another question. Can you share some of the lessons learned from the implementation of its learning during the, the coronavirus crisis? Because we had started with its learning at the start of the academic year, um, we were using its learning one way, and then we had to shift um, when we moved to the virtual school. And really the big shift for us was plans, starting to centralize everything in plans. Before we were creating a lot of tasks, which we had connected to the calendar, and we were using the gradebook quite heavily. But having teachers create plans was, I think, the big shift. And that would be the advice I would give any school moving to virtual or using its learning is get teachers and plans. It doesn't need to be perfect, but they should start putting resources and communicating with their students there as soon as possible. I think for, for me, um, the, the, the real key for me was, was just to keep things simple particularly with assignments, it's really easy to make them very simple and set them up quite quickly. And then once the students are happy navigating around those assignments, then you can start incorporating slightly more complex functions such as the peer assessment, such as self-assessment, and the collaborative submissions as well. Yeah, teachers, I mean, students really appreciate clarity. Sometimes when I was creating assignments, I would think, well, this is pretty, pretty, uh, not boring, but very straightforward, and I would want to start using some additional features to keep myself interested. But what students really want is they want it to be clear. You know, during that lesson time, they want to get in, they want to access the learning, they want to turn in their assignment so they can feel that sense of accomplishment. I think that's probably the most important thing for students, so keeping it simple. And you can do that through numbering things. You saw in all of our, our work on its learning, it's all numbered. First do this, then do that or do this throughout the lesson or the week. And for me, it's a, a lot about maintaining those relationships and also monitoring the student engagement. It's learning has enabled me to do that and, and keep that going throughout the, the, that virtual school experience. The students can see me in the course and they're more likely to stay engaged when they can see me interacting through the message board, through this 360 reports, and through the audio and video components. They, they know we're there, they know we're, we're a stable place for them in this crisis. Well, here's another question to follow up with this. What are your plans for its learning implementation when you sh shift back to the traditional setting after the distance learning period? Yeah, our next plan is to continue to develop plans uh, in its learning and make its learning that one place where students, teachers go. I skipped the slide in the intro, 
But after our mission, I have what's called the short miss mission, which is it's on its learning. That's what we want to hear teachers saying to students. We want teachers to say that to parents. We want students to say that to parents. We want um, students to say that to students. It's on its learning because we want it to be that one place where people go to find resources. And uh, our school is, I would say, very strong in educational technology, and we use a lot of different tools, and sometimes to our detriment. You know, there's all these different places that you can go, but what we want to do is have everything at least start in its learning and finish with its learning. So it starts with its learning in the plan, and it finishes with its learning in the gradebook, but what you create in between is up to you. So um, we want to continue to develop its learning as that central space for everything. We even have used, uh, it, we're using currently its learning, we've made a course for other teachers to deliver some professional development uh, activities and ideas. So we have our own staff course that we opened up to really, it really helped us to get vital information out to staff members about how to use its learning to their best of, the, of, of their abilities. And that has been a one-stop place for our staff as well. So. Students as well, we created some courses, a course with all the students in it for uh, communications from the, from the leadership. So we can do announcements, we can post really interesting performance and student work that goes to all the students. So when I met with the administrative assistants, they used to send out a bulletin to students, which was a PDF and it was once a week, and they wanted something a little bit more dynamic. So now they're posting on that overview page. They can post whenever they want. They can. Um, put crucial information, they can put fun information throughout the week to keep students motivated. All right, thank you very much. I see we have a lot of good questions. Uh, I don't know if we can follow up all of them today, but we will for sure answer by email or follow up with another piece of content. I think it's really good. And thank you all for this wonderful presentation again. Uh, we will also share the recording with all the registrants today. And of course, we will share the links to, uh, to, to, to this presentation so you will see more contact information as we showed in the previous slides. So I'm just going to share some more links as follow-ups. Here's more information about its learning. Uh, we also have some links about the product development roadmap and some content and useful resources about remote learning, blended learning, and anything that is coming up for this situation, the corona. Don't forget to follow us on social media, LinkedIn and Twitter. And just to finally to close with this uh, invitation, we have another webinar. It's called Lessons from COVID-19, Five Key Strategies to Pre Prepare for the New School Year. So in this session, our colleague Rachel Rigio will present valuable tips uh, and lessons learned to ensure that the protocol you put in place for remote learning works best for your school. So thank you again, Jacob, Amen, and Tom. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Thank you.